How did Ambassador Sondland come to believe that there was any connection between security assistance and investigations? Again, the House managers didn't tell you. Why not? In his public testimony, Ambassador Sondland used variations of the words assume, presume, guess, speculate, and belief over 30 times. Here are some examples. That was my presumption, my personal presumption. That was my belief. That was my presumption, yeah. Is that I right? said I presume that might have to be done in order to get the aid released. It was a presumption. I've been very clear as to when I was presuming, and I was presuming on the aid. It would be pure, um, you know, guesswork on my part, speculation, I don't, I don't know. That was the problem, Mr. Goldman. No one told me directly that the aid was tied to anything. I was presuming it was. Didn't show you any of this testimony. Not once during their 21-hour presentation. 21 hours. More than 21 hours. And they couldn't give you the context to evaluate Ambassador Sondland. The Democrats' entire quid pro quo theory is based on nothing more than the initial speculation of one person, Ambassador Sondland. That speculation is wrong. Despite the Democrats' hopes, the ambassador's mistaken belief does not become true merely because he repeated it many times and apparently to many people. Under Secretary of State David Hale, George Kent, and Ambassador Volcker all testified that there was no connection whatsoever between security assistance and investigations. Here is Ambassador Volcker. You had a meeting with the President of the United States, and you believe that the policy issues that he raised concerning Ukraine were valid, correct? Yes. Did the President of the United States ever say to you <clears throat> that he was not going to allow aid for the United States to go to the Ukraine unless there were investigations into Burisma, the Bidens, or the 2016 elections? No, he did not. Did the Ukrainians ever tell you that they understood that they would not get a meeting with the President of the United States, a phone call with the President of the United States, military aid or foreign aid from the United States unless they undertook investigations of Burisma, the Bidens, or the 2016 elections? No, they did not. The House managers never told you any of this. Why not? Why didn't they show you this testimony? Why didn't they tell you about this testimony? Why didn't they put Ambassador Sondland's testimony in its full and proper context for your consideration? Because none of this fits their narrative, and it wouldn't lead to their predetermined outcome. Answer the question. Is it correct? No one on this planet told you that Donald Trump was tying this aid to the investigations. Because if your answer is yes, then the chairman's wrong and the headline on CNN is wrong. No one on this planet told you that President Trump was tying aid to investigations. Yes or no? Yes. So, you really have no testimony today that ties President Trump to a scheme to withhold aid from Ukraine in exchange for these investigations? Other than my own presumption. Which is nothing. I mean, that's what I don't understand. So, you know what hearsay evidence is, Ambassador? Hearsay is when I testify what someone else told me. Do you know what made-up testimony is? Made-up testimony is when I just presume it. I mean, you're just assuming all of these things, and then you're giving them the evidence that they're running out and doing press conferences, and CNN's headline is saying that you're saying the President of the United States should be impeached because he tied aid to investigations, and you don't know that, correct? I never said the President of the United States should be impeached. Nope, but you did. You have left people with the confusing impression that you were giving testimony that you did not. You do not have any evidence that the President of the United States was tied to withholding aid from Ukraine in exchange for investigations. I yield back. 